Hello, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, on this video, I'm gonna go over uh, this uh, task that I recently had to do. Uh, as you can see, this is a really simple XML file, but this is just to give you an idea how you can take it from here. But the goal on this video is to show you how you can, uh, from a class, you can create a file just like this. So for example, you get the task or a project that you need to uh, read your database and then you need to save it in, into a specific uh, schema. Uh, for example, this one, it just has a basic encoding UTF-8 and a root and three elements in the XXML. So it's pretty simple. But you'll see how helpful it is if you ever get this task so what I've done is I've done a class the first you need to do is see what um, on your class before you see you have to compare both and say well um, before you even do anything make sure you get the namespace for serialization from the XML namespace from there make sure your class is public if not, well, at least this static uh, will have issues getting into it. So once you have your namespace ready, you can create your properties. And as you can see here, I have three properties, and uh, each is for one of the elements in the XML. And their matching name is name, uh, in this case, Pandora, and then the type is online radio, URL is pandora.com. So, that's all you need to do see what elements you have on this example and that's what I'm gonna do after you have this class then you come back to your pro to your main uh, method and then as you can see here uh, I initialize the object and I pass um, some values I just made this up right now so you pass the name the type and the URL of course these are optional but and we're gonna go through each element after that you're gonna create this object uh, XML serializer so well, as you can see here it has eight overloads the one that I'm using is sorry the one that I'm using is passing a type of object in this XML class is this class so it's pretty simple now the next thing I've done here is uh, usually the XML serializer always does a namespace for you but I don't like that in the XML so you can see this one there's no namespace at the top so what I'm done here is just adding one and what basically I'm doing is just adding nothing up to it so after you do this part to get rid of the namespace uh, well I'm gonna comment this out so you can see the difference but as you can see here there's one method called serialize and then all I'm doing here is passing the output to the console because this is a console uh, program and I'm just passing the object with all this value already assigned to it and that's it and then we'll just read a line or write a line and read the line so we'll run it and as you can see I got what I was expecting one thing I noticed is the encoding for the console is this is not UTF it's for the console is totally different but anyways here's the namespace that I was telling you about you see this XML NS da -da -da, and all this long schema all the way here I don't like that so the way to get rid of it is I'm gonna go back and Oops. So we'll do this. And then here, the serialize uh, method takes in a namespace. So we'll do that. And then we'll run it again. As you can see, it's clean now. Your root uh, element, it's clean, no namespace. So it still doesn't look like it's still, well, this is actually the root is different because my class is different. But let's say, oh, my class root doesn't match with this doc. So what do I do? You can either rename the class 
for example, if I go back here and rename this class to root doc, then it will work. But if you don't want to do that, the other option we got is that we need to uncomment this guy. And here we're saying that the when we do serialization for this class, the root is going to be this the name. So it's going to be root doc. So you can name it whatever. And then we'll run it again. So you can see it matches root dot root dot name type and you're out just like this one. Now let's say if you wanna rename this guy, name that element, then you use a different uh, attribute or different as you assign different properties to this for, for example to the name. Let's say I wanna name it I don't know what else uh, something we'll run it and this what it's gonna do uh, when the serialization uh, goes through it's not gonna use the name it's gonna use this one so we're overriding that element as you can see we're overriding name with online name from here from the class so you can control uh, your element names root name and attributes all everything you need to build an XML. So from here, instead of um, let's say you want to uh, drop it somewhere on FTP or email it, you would instead of doing this to a console out, you just save it to uh, using a text writer uh, to your local PC or computer, or whatever. But hopefully this demo will help has helped you get an idea how you serialization works. So from a class that I have like this, I populate it with values and then I serialize it and we have this output. Um, the next video will show how you can do the other way around. How you can read the XML and work with it as an object with properties, name, type, and URL. So hopefully uh, this answers um, maybe some questions that you might have in the future and if you have any questions you can come by to nerd central actually c sharp nerd.com or on facebook that will work too facebook.com c sharp nerd and leave me a message and i'll try to help you as soon as possible thank you for watching